cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. It's time for our rock and paper scissors. Yes. Aisha, right, let's do it. Let's do it. Rock, rock paper, paper scissors. scissors. Oh. How the tables have turned. How the tables have turned Amazing. On, a, on this I lucky Monday. I think Monday will be my lucky day every day. How and, is it uh, your lucky day every day? You mean every week? I'm just saying that if I do win again on next Monday, yeah. then it's just close. I know, good to go, that Monday is going to be my lucky day. We'll see next Monday. And also, I'll PSA again, once more, it's the sinking chair again. Well, I guess I have sunk down. I guess unlucky Monday for it's you. It's unlucky right? Monday for me. If anybody's like watching us right now on our live stream on YouTube, Pulse ninety five Radio, check us out. You'd see that I'm partially out of frame because I I kept on sinking. Don't worry. For we'll, the we'll, past two minutes, it's guys. We'll cut to commercials and we'll take care of it. Don't worry. A Pulse ninety five presenters, please. This is an, another. I've been sending PSAs every single week. Can we please stop moving around the chairs? I'm a short person. Look at me. I'm literally, I've sunk down to beneath the table. This is just, this is sad. Don't worry. We're I look funny. I can see myself through the screens right now. And I'm literally, you can just see like half of me. I can, I need to, I need to sit up like this. You know, how about we get one of those like uh, seat cushions to kind of are bring you, you up Are a you bit. calling me a child? I'm not calling you a child. I'm you, just, are you claiming that I, I need solving, a booster seat? I am solving a problem. No, you're saying that I need a booster seat because I'm tiny. I mean, you were, you know, when you sit here for an hour long, it can and get a little uncomfortable. The pillow would be great for your back. Nobody would complain, right? And you'd be right on the frame. So think of it that way. I, I'm gonna stick to um, sending. I'm gonna <laughs> send a very. Her, huh? I'm gonna send a very like, very angry email very soon to all the presenters, being like, please, please, just stop moving this chair. I, I, I mean, to I, put, I need funny. to put stickers on these chairs so I can mark them and know which one is the bad one well, and I mean, the good one. Again, if you guys can are watching this right now, I'm gonna try putting up the chair again, and you guys can watch me slowly descend throughout the entire segment. It is just hilarious because I can see myself. I can see myself just slowly going like, mm, down I go. Bad case of the Mondays. Bad case of the Am Mondays. Am I right? Am I right? I swear to God. But so, it, we have some a lot of... Into the hour. Oh yeah, a lot of things we're gonna be talking about. We are gonna be talking about Godzilla and uh, Kong, but not today, because somebody has not been going to the cinemas yet. Somebody's waiting for the HBO Max release, which will happen in a couple of days. So yeah. then that actually gonna be easier. I, I need Aisha's opinion on this movie. And also, again, it's gonna be easier for our listeners to also watch it as well, giving them some time so they can join in the conversation at the exactly. end of the week. That but way, today, we can kind of touch into some spoilers in the film, some things I, uh, you know, I have some gripes oh, on. Oh, we have some gripes about them. But you know, well, you know. Let's keep that for the now review. Now you know who wins, right? So you know it. I know. It's uh, interesting. It's interesting. I'm happy, but a little uh, unhappy at the uh, same time. I understand that. But I am really happy about Netflix because they just announced their a list of F animes coming out for in Netflix this year. 40 of them. Ooh. 40 anime. I, I've been waiting for this. But here's the thing. Are they good or are they not good? Because they do have a whole list of anime hmm. that are already up there, and none of them really pop out that much, do they? I probably we will tell you which ones pop out. I know which ones you're going for. I definitely know that. Anime fans, we rejoice. We're going to be talking about more anime, Attack on Titan. Yes, we're not going to talk about yesterday's episode, even though I really want to, but somebody, somebody refuses to watch it until it ends. So apparently he's going to be binge watching it throughout the week. Oh, yeah. Which honestly, you got lucky. You got absolutely lucky. I'm just lucky. not on Twitter. That's it. Not even not on Twitter. I'm just saying you're lucky because there are trolls everywhere yeah. for years when it comes to those big anime who just, you know, they, they itch. They, they have an itch to tell you the entirety of the story. Thank there you, was, Lucky Mondays. There was actually somebody on a random subreddit, just a random subreddit, giving a spoiler, just like that. And he admitted that he just enjoys doing that. Some people just want to watch the whole world burn. Exactly. Going to be talking about the newly opened museum in the creator's own hometown, which is a nice homage to him, and so much more. We're going to be talking also about the boat in the Suez Canal, and also what ideas do you have? They say that 80% of it has been moved, so we're getting there, but do you guys have better ideas that would have made the entire process faster? We'd love to hear from you, because I've got a couple of ideas. Text us 4215, it is a lot, or do the chair chronicles continue, the fun continue, only here on Pulse 95. 
Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. Anime fans rejoice. Netflix is announcing 40 anime titles coming to the platform in 2021. That is a lot, but obviously the question remains are they the type of anime that will stand out? Because uh, we know that Netflix has been a platform for anime for quite a while now. However, none of them really or rarely any of them have been interesting. Even the well-known adaptations, which is, for example, Doro Hedro, which is an amazing manga. It's a beautiful, interesting story. But this adaptation is very lackluster. You could say it's execution. It's very, eh, it's, not, it's very experimental, which means that not a lot of people have been, you know, flocking to watch it. One of the few anime that I'd say that people have been, you know, would associate, um, what do you call it, would associate Netflix with are, for example, The Great Pretender. And there oh, is, man, uh, what is it called? Psyche 88, was that? Psyche something? The guy with the pink hair. Psyche. Uh- but that, that's a, I'm not sure if that's a Netflix exclusive. It is, but it is. It is on Netflix. That's the thing. A yeah. lot of people associate it with Netflix as well. Beastars is also a well-known anime on Netflix, which is also not owned by Netflix. It's not exclusive on Netflix. Yeah, there's also but, Baki, Devilman yep. Crybaby, mm-hmm. Castlevania. But there, there's a thing. Yeah, I know if you type in anime, Netflix are going to have at least like another 100 titles. But out of all of them, we can only name three, four, five of them. I will admit, some of the anime exclusives are um, yeah, sort of a miss, but it doesn't it doesn't hurt to have a lot more projects uh, related to anime mm-hmm. uh, and having Netflix involved with it. Uh, the chief anime producer from Netflix says, we want to be able to pride ourselves as being top entertainment destination with good quality content. The growth of our business is directly connected to the growth of our anime. And uh, there's reports here about the anime market uh, reaching over $23 billion last year, and it's going to continue continue to grow up to 36 billion dollars by 2025 that's expected. so even though i know out of the 40 animes maybe 10 of them might be great it's still good that they're tapping into that anime market as as they're going because they're expanding they must expand a different market just like the way they started investing in uh, local stories because obviously when they went internationally, they started looking into, for example, more Netflix adaptations of Indian stories, Netflix adaptations of French, Spanish stories, of, you know, Central American stories. That way they can give us, you know, a whole diversity and also tap into these various markets around the world. So what is your favorite, what would you say is the highly anticipated anime? Shaman King. Shaman King, okay. Because it's obviously, it's a remake of or a reboot of something I grew up watching. I used to have the DVDs. I used to, again, get them. Oh, man. I used to get them from the, um, what do you call it, from the petrol station. I used to ask my mom, like, can you please, while you fill up the car, can I just go there and check out if I can find the second volume or third volume? Obviously, didn't have all of them, but I had around maybe three or four DVDs. So you'll be able to sort of like relive that childhood. Exactly. Because just like what they did with Fruit Baskets, I feel like I hope that we can see more of these adaptations where they take some old anime that were kind of neglected. I want to say neglected, but then you know how they, at some point back then, we used to only get the season or two maximum, if Yeah, because I think anime was tied to, uh, tied down to networks back then, mm-hmm. depending on uh, sort of like household ratings. Now anime is all over the place. It's on Absolutely. digital, it's on t- television. It's, mm-hmm. So there's a lot of sort of leniency with where anime can be broadcasted. And also in general, just because it was just a normal thing back then that most anime did not go beyond 20 episodes. Yeah. I know you can name me like at least 20 exceptions to the rule, but I'm talking about between maybe 2005 and 2012. That was just a norm. Just you 12 to, episodes, 13 episodes. Yeah, up to 20 or 21 if we're, if we're lucky. We don't get a full manga adaptation sometimes. Sometimes because the manga has not ended yet, which is understandable, we understand that. But, you know, we, we end up missing out on things. We're still waiting for season two of so many things that have been out there for at least 10 15, 13 years. So it'll be nice to see all these uh, come back. So I hope that Netflix taps into that very specific market as well. We see those remakes. And I'm also very excited about The Way of the House Husband. I used to read the manga. It's very fun. So hilarious. But 
I saw the trailer and I hate the trailer. Mm-hmm. The animation looks like a PowerPoint presentation. I, I'm hoping mm, it's just a trailer. Yeah. I'm just hoping it's a stylistic trailer and nothing else beyond that. Uh, if it's not the animation, it's the voice work. And that's something I'm also sort of very picky about. For me, it would be Record of Ragnarok. This mm. is going to be super epic. Uh, I don't want to spoil it to anybody, but it's coming out this June. Uh, see some of the trailers. It's definitely hype. And, you know, 39 more animes to go on Netflix later this year. Texas 4215. It's a lot to do. Is there an anime that's coming on Netflix that you're excited about? Share it with us here on the Afternoon Cutduck. But we're also excited about to uh, about uh, the uh, Attack on Titan Museum. And there we go again with a, another sort of uh, addition to Aisha's bucket list. So let's get into it right here on the Afternoon Cutduck. <sighs> Hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. I have to say, this this opening used to give me nightmares. I'm not even kidding. For the yeah. first 13, 12, okay, it's like 16 episodes long. For maybe out of those 16 episodes, for 14 episodes, I could not listen to it. It was a little bit of a shocker. I remember people reacting to it. It's like, this is not what an Attack on Titan OP would sound like. Well, here's the but thing. But then the, it kind of reflects the it's tone exactly. of this season. Exactly that. So that's the thing. We're trying not to go into spoiler territory for two reasons. One, I know that a lot of people have probably are still getting into it, even though the anime has been out, you know, the old the yeah. first two, three seasons. And I'm acting kind of like a blind f- here. Yes, and he, Mikhail, has not watched the. F- oh my God, I'm gonna get like you. You, you should be impressed by my no, ability I, to no, resist. No, that's stubbornness. <laughs> it's just straight up stubbornness, Mikhail. Why aren't you not? Why weren't you not keeping up with it? Because it would have been more exciting. You're right. Rather than go spinging it, just remove the excitement of oh my God, I need to wait till next week to find out. I don't. It has. I don't know. I'll just, tell you, I, I, I made that an exception because Heda, my sister, we used to watch it together, mm-hmm. and she forced me into this waiting for it to bulk up to watch. See, that's the thing. thing. I feel the opposite because we got so used to binge watching. When we have those things where it forces you to wait until the next week, it makes it more exciting. You're right, you're right. It keeps excitement and you feel you're up to date and you're with the talk and the conversation online and whatnot. So it's a lot of fun, which is why I'm telling you, you should have kept on going. And for well, part two. Part two, I will watch to. it week by week. You need to because, again, I read the entirety of the manga and guys... You guys have no idea what's coming for you. You have no idea. It's it's a mess. But that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about the author himself, Hajime Isayama, and how he is actually, they've opened a museum, the Attack on Titan Museum in his hometown. And just like Mikhail said, it's definitely added to my bucket list, for my Japan bucket list for the longest time. It's always been a Ghibli Museum, and now we have the Nintendo, Super Nintendo World, and yeah. we have Universal, Disneyland, so many things, et cetera, et cetera. You know, Nada Island. I want to see the the deers and, you know, chill, chill with the deers and whatnot. And now we have this museum, which I which has a lot of things happening, obviously. If you see the picture, Mikhail, yeah. you can see the various artwork that the creator himself has It's drawn. almost like a glimpse into his uh, beginnings. Oh my how God. his inspiration to forming this the characters yeah. the world the lore uh, there's a lot of drafts i can see just across like just hallways worth of mm-hmm. worth of stuff in there and i know fans are going to go there and it's like wait i've not seen this character in the show or in the series maybe. so there'll be like these cutaway content that even the creators never showed maybe and honestly again it's like Mikhail says going to be a glimpse into his uh, very insane mind because again the more I watch it, the more I read about it, the more I read the the crazy, crazy conspiracies. It's like, and how does he come up with it? That's exactly what I said. By the time I reach the before the last uh, chapter, because we have one more chapter to go coming out on 9th of April. Bismillah. Just like a, around like what, 10 days away? Yeah. <laughs> If and Aisha's not here, I'll tell you guys why. You will, guys, you will know exactly why. <laughs> Again, 9th of April. On the 10th of April, I'm going to be a whole mess. But yeah, you just reading those chapters, I'm like, how does he come up with this? Like, I, I honestly, I know that the fans might be annoying, but it's absolutely true when we look at this anime and the, just the manga itself and the progression of the story and the things that are happening in the story, the foreshadowing and whatnot. 
he is quite a smart guy. He is a very smart guy. And yes, the manga can be messy at some point. Yeah. But he's very, very smart. His storytelling is very much out of this world. And anybody who watched the third season and you've seen the ending of the third season, the whole plot twist and the craziness of it, you'd be like, yeah, this guy is not ordinary at all, to be honest. Honestly, you know, uh, I can't wait to go to Japan myself and, and just go to all these museums, the mm -hmm. theme parks. And I hope my dream is that Araki, the creator of Jojo Bizarre Adventure, opens mm. up his own museum. Oh, yeah, he deserves he, he, that. In Japan, he actually has a couple of uh, clothing lines. Mm -hmm. So there's like a suit for one of the characters. Because I, he, he's very much inspired by a lot of high-end brands. And I'm honestly, I feel like it's his... I feel like the story is his way of expressing all of that, the colorfulness. The and aesthetics and all, yeah. Absolutely. So I hope like more of those, um, you know, big anime get all those, uh, get the chance to display all the artwork, display their thought process and whatnot. Texas 4215, Insolent or do an Attack on Titan Museum. Would you go? And if you wish a favorite anime of yours was also a museum, do let us know right here on the Afternoon Cut. We're going to be taking a bit of a break. We got the sport headlines. And coming up next, we got a rumor about Red Dead Redemption. Now, we all know this is one of the best games out there. But what if we took that game and turned it into a film? Hmm. Let's stay tuned right here on Pulse95. Speculation. Gossip. Or hoax. Rumor has it. Before we go into our rumor, I just want to say TikTok has been basically ruining my life, ruining my music taste, because before the break, we were talking about Attack on Titan. <laughs> if you missed out on that discussion, don't worry, there were absolutely no spoilers from season one to season four. Absolutely zero spoilers. Don't worry, guys, we got you. And I was talking about the opening theme and how it basically used to give me nightmares because it's very terrifying, in my opinion. And until... Somebody on TikTok made a made this weird mashup of Dua Lipa's levitating with the song. And if you ever listen to the lyrics of Attack on Titan's uh, My War, it's literally about dying and war and you go like, levitating. Let's go skate more, let's skate around and like have fun and um, you know, dance around and then we're like, oh let's go to war, let's go kill people. So it's very an interesting dynamic, but it slaps. It is fantastic. It is a jam. Guys, check it out on TikTok. I'm, again, just telling you that TikTok is, is the place to be. But let's move on to this rumor because according to some people that there is a Red Dead Redemption movie in the works at Sony. And since it's at work at Sony, I believe this. Because obviously we know that Sony has been tapping yeah. into the whole turning video game franchises into movies and TV shows. We've got The Last of Us, we've got uh, Uncharted. So it makes sense that they would go for another video game franchise that is very popular and very successful. That is Red Dead Redemption. Exactly. It's a Red Dead Redemption has always been uh, a really lengthy um, Wild West drama story, you could say. And people absolutely love the first and the second game that has come out. But when you say an adaptation, how are you going to take a story that's 60 hours long? And I've played it. I play Red Dead Redemption 2. It's yeah. 60 hours long. Red Dead Redemption 1, maybe 50, 40 hours if you're rushing. How are you going to take all of that and cram it into a two-hour film? This is Question. my biggest concern. Question. Is the 40, 50 hours, is it just if you stick to the main story or does it include the side quests main and all story. those small things? Main story. I don't think in a consideration playing a game is very different than you're, watching it. You're they're right. going to cut out some small things here and there that are unnecessary perhaps to a movie, but they're necessary to the video game and playing experience. I see what you mean. So you can easily perhaps take out a good 20, 30 hours if you take that into consideration. Take those, you know, when you're traveling from one place to another. Other, those random side quests that you take that are essential to the main quest but in the movie can easily be removed and they can easily compress it perhaps to a two-hour movie two hour and a half if they're gonna be extra please don't go for three hours that Zack 
Snyder did it does not mean that everybody should be doing but it. But Red Dead might actually do it because it is a, again, a very story driven, very lengthy kind of experience. And uh, my question actually is which story, which story are they going to focus? Which characters are, gonna, are, are they going to focus on? Are they going to go directly from the games or are we going to have a whole new character? I can think of Arthur Morgan who plays, uh, mm -hmm. who plays um, a Dutch's sort of main man in Red Dead Redemption 2. Or we play as John Marston. We know that's the one from the first uh, first Red Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, will they go uh, do a prequel or do a sequel? I don't know. Uh, it's just so many theories. I can and guys, I wish I can talk about it, but it's just the just the when you put when you try to take this game and turn it into a movie, and just the the roster of characters and the yeah. story events that happen. All I know is that the, in some way they're going to talk about revenge in some way because that's what Red Dead Redemption is all about. And it's called Redemption. Redemption is, in a sense. Yeah. That I feel like there's going to be a revenge story. Either they're going to focus uh, mostly on John Marston. That's my theory. Then again, I don't know if this is even happening. I would be excited. And at the same time, I'm thinking, is this what Rockstar has been doing this whole time? <laughs> Just making movie adaptations without getting giving us any announcements about Grand Theft Auto 6? Oh, God. Are we going to go back? That's one of the ongoing stories right here on the we Afternoon won't. Cut. We will not delve into it. We're instead going to move on to another epic fantasy, or at least a potential epic fantasy, because George R.R. Martin has reportedly signed a massive five-year overall deal with HBO that... Some claim might be like six or seven figures worth. Ooh, well, you know, it is. is this is George, George R. R. Martin. We're even though about. he'll probably take 10 years to finish one TV show. <clears throat> but that is okay. <clears throat> we can talk about that coming right up next, right here on the Afternoon Karak. <sighs> Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. Once upon a time, there was an author named George R. R. Martin, and he worked on a series called A Song of Ice and Fire. And HBO, back in 2007, picked them up, uh, bought the license for his uh, book series, and turned it into what is now one of the most popular, award-winning television series in history. Bear in mind, season eight, we don't talk about. It's, it's non-canonical. Non six to eight, right? I would say seven and eight. Seven, where we're seeing signs of something bad. Eight was like the full train wreck. <laughs> but let's be honest. It's, yes, you guys blame the two um, directors, but isn't it George R. R. Martin's fault? In a way, in retrospective, it definitely is, you're right. Because, again, they didn't really have, it's their fault for being a little bit cocky. But at the same time, they did not have any material to go off on. And they basically were missing the entirety of the continuation of this story. Again, fans are still waiting, and perhaps they're going to be waiting for quite a while since we did speak that about HBO basically reportedly um, greenlighting several, I mean, at least maybe six, seven um, Game of Thrones prequels and sequels and just, you know, stories, accompanying stories for the platform. Yeah. And apparently, he they have also signed an exclusive deal with George R.R. R. Martin, a five-year overall deal, which means that he probably will need to be writing and you know, just making sure everything is going smoothly, running smoothly on the various TV shows that they have reportedly greenlit for the next five years. Now, we know that House of Dragons is in development, and last week we covered three of the uh, the pitched um, uh, Greenland projects. Mm -hmm. The Nemeria project, the Sea Snake, uh, Flea Bottom. There was also uh, talks before about Dunk and the Egg project. Yeah. And a couple of animated drama series. And uh, it's nice to see that HBO Max, uh, HBO, uh, wants to expand the world of uh, Game of Thrones. And I I'm excited for the animated series. I feel like they can do a lot with that. And with George R.R. R. Martin stepping in, taking that deal, but also supervising because a lot of the uh, adaptations they're working on, he already wrote that stuff. It's all there. It's established. We hope so. We hope so. so because we won't have that, you know, writer's block situation again. We hope so because he's notorious for claiming that, you know, it takes a long time for him to write a story. Listen, I understand procrastination. I am the queen of procrastination here. And I, again, I understand that, but this is just ridiculous. God bless him. George, Never come on. Ne George, come on. George, George we, we have faith in you. I'm not even a big Game of Thrones fan, and even I'm disappointed. So I feel sorry for all of the fans. You can do better. We believe in you. Absolutely believe in you that you can 
and continue the story and give the fans exactly what they want and what they need from their beloved series. Coming up next, the Suez Canal, the cargo ship that's been stuck there for nearly a week. Yes, we know according to some news, it's been announced that earlier this, this morning, they have moved the stern by 80%. They are getting there, but apparently, this is hilarious, hilarious a little bit, but the Microsoft Flight Simulator, actually, if you're flying or playing that game, you can actually, if you pass by the Suez Canal, you can see the actual ship. Let's talk about that and so much more right here on the Afternoon Cutter. Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia On Pulse 95. Nothing has been more relatable in the past week than the Ever Given, which is a massive cargo ship that has been accidentally, you know, a little oopsie. It's been stuck in the Suez Canal for nearly a week now. And because Yikes. how massive it is, it's been kind of difficult to move it around. But they actually have a rescue ship that came all the way from the Netherlands. That's their job, actually. They usually save cargo ships. And also, the canals authority has been working really, really hard. Even, you know, you've got various, um, you know, machines on the shore digging up and trying to get it to move around. But again, it's a very relatable thing that happened in 2021. And there's been news that 80% of it has been freed. We're getting there very close to finally oh getting dear. the ship free. And it has cost billions worth of dollars of losses across many, many many companies. If you thought COVID-19 was an economy stopper, <laughs> yeah, look at this. Look at this. And apparently the flight simu simulator, Microsoft's flight simulator, has actually incorporated this catastrophe into its latest update because if you actually fly over the Suez Canal in the game, you can see this stuck cargo ship, which I think is kind of funny. I feel really, really, really bad for the captain because he kind of caused a massive economic catastrophe that a lot of people have been blaming that person for it. And because of uh, that captain, all of these ships have to take an extra four-week diversion. Basically, mm. if you have ever studied about the Cape of Good Hope, which back when it was discovered, discovered, you know, quote-unquote, a lot of ships, you know, took it as the main route for hundreds and hundreds of years, all the way back maybe in the 15th, 16th century, until obviously they built the Suez Canal and became the standard route for all these cargo ships. So now to get to Asia, it takes an extra four weeks, we have only to revert, because of that. Because of that, we have to revert to our old ways. Absolutely. How said, uncanny. How uncanny. What is it called? A reject modernity modernity and to turn back to tradition that is exactly it yeah but it also has caused a lot of ships to basically get stuck there if you're wondering why your uh, pack of batteries haven't arrived from <laughs> amazon then you know you know that reason that's probably it's probably the ever given but the question is mikhail if it was in your hand how would you move the ever given well um hmm the answer I, the answer is obvious mikhail what would it be call up godzilla and king kong you're right. Absolutely call right. Call them up. I get. I, I actually. I would just need Kong. You know, because I watched the movie and he does. He does a few things that. Uh, he's just. He's. I think he has. No, it's not about pushing. It's about carrying it from both sides. So it requires two big kaiju to carry it from each side to move it and twist it around and put it back on the canal. That's what I. That's meant. only. That's only if they don't destroy each other. No. Again. <laughs> in the process. It's the power just of trying friendship. To fight each it's other. the power of friendship that prevails at the end of the day and what brings us all together. Or, or I call up my my squad from Pacific Rim because. Uh, oh yeah. You know they did pick up one of those ships like it was nothing except they, they use it as a as a melee weapon but you know they can maybe just help absolutely <laughs> call up the uh the jaegers and maybe they can move it again see the thing is the the sad thing is that jaegers do not exist however not yet however it's a good thing because the jaegers existing was because of random kaijus appearing from beneath the so ocean. So we wouldn't want that to happen. Exactly. So it's like you win some, you lose some. I don't see giant robots hanging around, but also we don't see giant monsters trying to destroy us. Text us 4215. It's Salat or do Tell us how would you personally, if you can do whatever you want, if you had all the resources in the world, how would you have moved the ever given ship from the Suez Canal? 
We're going to be taking a short break and coming up next, filmmakers. We have a very important suggestion just for you guys. Stay tuned for that and so much more at the Magic Hour right here on the Afternoon Karak. It's almost 5 p.m. That was Afternoon Karak. For dessert, Aisha and Mikhail suggest... As usual, in addition to our usual suggestions, there is an important one that we'd like to talk about and remind you of, and that is our podcast. You know, we always upload our podcast right after the show because, yes, you guys might have missed out on some important things. Yes, we speak about really important things right here on the afternoon. For example, Attack on Titan. It's important to us. Yeah, important, no, to everybody. And to you. And to you. Attack on Titan is important. Um, what else is important? Anime is important as in general. Also, a little um, Game of Thrones, a little, little rumor Thrones. here and there. And also uh, the Suez Canal and the catastrophe that's happening. They're all important things. So if you've missed out, search up our podcast, The Afternoon Karak, wherever you listen to podcasts. And that includes Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Rami SoundCloud. Again, just search us up, Afternoon Karak, and listen to us. If you want to see our expressions, if you want to see me sink down... <laughs> Throughout the entirety of the hour because I keep getting bad luck with these chairs around here in the, in the studio and because I am short. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, Pulse95 Radio, because the episode also goes live a little bit after the show. Now we move on onto a very important, the fourth edition of the Sharjah film platform. It is back and we'll be back here in November 2021. So this is an open call to all filmmakers to send in all your films. There will be categories in uh, documentaries, experimental films, narrative films, and the application deadline is 10th of May of this year. Yes. Uh, be sure to go to either Sharjah Art Foundation or the Sharjah Film Platform and submit your projects. It doesn't hurt to share your personal expression mm -hmm. uh, to charge to the charger film platform and hey you just might make it because they have awards for all sorts of categories such as best narrative best documentary best experimental short and feature film mm -hmm. so if you're a filmmaker here in charge and across the uae and you across want across the world actually, across the world as because well because it doesn't matter where you're from again if you're tuning into us from outside the uae you're also eligible for this competition for this festival and again just like mikhail said the categories are endless whatever your film is about it is also eligible for this film platform. Check so out Sharjah check Film it out. Platform. Check it out. It's super important. We're trying to, you know, enhance, you know, the film festival right here in the UAE and in Sharjah. We also would love to be, you know, a platform for you guys. So go ahead and do it. Check it out. It's just up there. It we doesn't just, hurt. We it want our hurt. Sharjah talent to we shine. Want to, we want you guys. Again, just like, you know, Uncle Sam, we want you to join. Uncle Aisha. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mikhail. Aunt, Auntie Aisha. Uncle, I, I don't mind it. Uncle Aisha. <laughs> so with this, we end our hour right here on the afternoon. Karak, unfortunately, but the fun continues with Yalla Home, Big House, and Anna Schofield. Take over from 5 p.m. all the way till 8 p.m. Only here on Pulse 95. 95. If you liked this episode of Afternoon Karak, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.